Dear ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to this year's Technology Day presentation about our Freeformer system, a unique system. And we have chosen as a topic for this year's presentation uh, what are the current developments combined with real industrial applications. A few words to my side. Um, I'm Martin Neff, uh, responsible for the R&D uh, process development uh, on the Freeformer side. And let us start with the presentation, Additive Manufacturing and Freeformer. Why have we chosen as Arbor to go into this development of, you, of developing an additive manufacturing system? Why one, do we want to increase our product portfolio in that way? Um, here you see some features on those slides. Um, the technical development goes faster and faster. So it is a requirement that we get to prototypes, new development part, develop parts very quickly and rapidly. Um, also the product life cycles, if we look for instance into the mobile industry is uh, becoming shorter and shorter. So that leads again to a faster uh, new uh, product in a shorter time. Uh, different growing numbers of vari variants, uh, also different uh, part variants and also the customized specific personalized products. All those requirements out of the market uh, have given us um, the question, hey, what can we do to support our customer in the best, uh, utmost uh, way? And uh, that uh, means that additive manufacture is a good technology to help there. Um, we have developed, therefore, a completely new system. Uh, basically, we have chosen our expertise, what we have already in-house, and combined that with the additive technology. So therefore, we come up with the freeformer principle. And on the freeformer side, basically, we have from uh, material preparation the same as we do it on the injection molding side. That means in the end of the day, we start with normal standard resin, with normal standard pellets, and we are melting the pellets similar than we do it on the injection molding side. To give you an, uh, uh, an idea about the size, this is the screw which we are using. You see that in the slide as well, the screw is rotating. Material gets prepared in the same way as for injection molding. We have also a check ring assembly on the front. When we have melted the plastic, we keep that plastic under pressure and then we release with an opening and closing mechanism. It's comparable to the needle shut off side, uh, shut off nozzle on, on, on the molding side. Uh, we release small tiny droplets and out of these droplets we build up a part layer by layer. The nozzle uh, and the closing mechanism gets activated by a piezo and that piezo has a frequency of uh, let's say max about 300 uh, droplets in a second and that's how we build up the part. So we use standard qualified materials. Um, the materials itself need to be prepared similar to injection molding. That means we have the possibility to have a dryer system on top of the machine for drying the material and also the possible and complete freedom of uh, coloring the material using master batches or whatever. Uh, in this introduction round around the freeformer, we want to start with also giving you an idea of what materials are we using. Uh, um, and you see that in this chart, that we have some standard, we call it standard typical materials like the ABSs, like the polycarbs, like the thermoplastic elastomers, which is a big area, I come to that uh, later on. So uh, also a polymide and also the blends of those, those we call standard uh, materials. Then we have materials uh, which are more customized to specific products, um, the flame, retardant material, medical polylactides, uh, biopolymers or conductive polymer special compounds. We have also in that specific special original materials the PP because that is a semi-crystalline material and it is a further challenge to process semi-crystalline materials. I will go deeper into that in 
some later slides as well. Important in the additive world is um, do we need to work with support material, yes or no? And if we need to have support material, we have the choice of using two different support materials. That's a water-soluble one um, and a alkali-soluble one. And um, of course, each are always possible with um, compatible with the build material. From the free former machine range, we have currently two different sizes available. And that is the first very new thing. Uh, last year, November 2013, we have launched a new free former, which we call free former 303X. That is the machine which can be equipped with three discharge units. So you can really build three component parts. The current machine which we had since uh, 2013 on the market, the Freeformer 200, has only two discharge units and also a little bit a smaller build size. You see that already in the picture when you look at the whole size of the machine. So the Freeformer 300 is actually uh, 50 percent larger in the X stroke. A few words to that new machine um, which we launched uh, as I mentioned on the Form Next show 2013. Obviously we have the possibility and you see that nicely in those pictures that we can have three discharge units actually for real three component two component parts and the third component is then a support material. Um, this is a hard soft combination for instance where we had a support material in between so we want to build real really uh, functional um, and stiff parts in the hard soft version. We can also use the three different units to have two different build materials and in the middle for instance support materials so our customers are using that specific setup for uh, minimizing material changeovers or of course the real three component parts also that is possible. Um, build size area is 300 cubic centimeters that's why uh, the name Freeformer 300 the available build chamber uh, you see in the dimensions in the slide uh, and also of course dryers integrated so fully functionable. A few new features we want to explain in this slide, in this, this next slide. Active electric height adjustment of the nozzles. So the nozzles which are not in process they get swiveled up and are completely out of the working area. This minimizes a uh, heat uh, spot, a hot spot, so to say. Um, also, the nozzle design was optimized. We have a single piece nozzle. We have, for instance, a heater band directly on the nozzle. We have an optimized temperature household of the whole nozzle. The built jumper door is automated. That means the front door can move, move down. Uh, we use this automated door for, for instance, the integration of the Freeformer machine into automatic production lines. I will also show you some slides about that a little bit later. And external cooling can also be supplied. Um, this is, for instance, for high engineering grades material we, where we want to have a better controlling of the cooling in general. Let's talk a little bit deeper about the actual process uh, and the actual requirement what we have given us that we want to create functional prototypes. What, is, what does that mean? Well, first of all, that means we need to have a very reduced reproducible and a very precise discharge of the material. And we have this so-called open system, which means that we can adapt the process to the specific material in a very easy setup, in a, a very easy way. And this is comparable to injection molding machines as you do it with the molding machines as well. We have chosen here one example, and this is a cube. 
you can see that cube nicely in, in my hands and you see that we have darker green areas and lighter green areas. Um, the lighter green areas are softer. So actually the density of that specific smaller cube in this big cube is softer, uh, is, is less than the density, for instance, on this side, right? So you can really adjust even inside a part according you to your specific requirements, uh, the process to get to the best mechanical characteristics, to get to the best density, what, is, what you want to achieve. And when we go further, um, to show you that a little bit uh, more in a way to, to, to get a better understanding, it means that we basically place the droplets a little bit further apart from each other or a little bit next, more next to each other and that creates a different density. Why do we say that and why do we point that out? Well, we point it out because we want to create functional parts, right? Functional parts on the injection molding machine means that we have a strength and that we have uh, the mechanical properties and this other extreme example what we show here, this is a, a cube made out of polycarb, a Macrolone 2805. And this part is completely visible. You can look through, means after the process, it doesn't come out like this, by the way, but after the process, we have polished it. We have polished it and we use that example to show that the inside the layers, that the droplets inside the layers, they are completely melted together. And you can imagine if you have a part where you can uh, look through that this has a 100% density and that that refers to 100% good mechanical properties. For doing that, we need to have not just a looking at the part from outside. No, we need to look inside the part. Hey, what's going on? Are the droplets melted together? And for doing that, we use the so-called um, CT technology. We, with a computer thoracograph, we really look through the parts and go through the layers. Um, and we use that also for the processing then of, for instance, semi-crystalline materials. Uh, we started with a few semi-crystalline materials. This is a, an example, for instance, for a PP, uh, a normal PP cover, uh, which you can see. And the challenge for semi-crystalline materials is often the distortion so that it, it, it gets warped. Um, and this is due to the semi-crystalline uh, structure. That means when the, uh, the, the molecular chains recrystalline, uh, you, get, you get a kind of a, a distortion effect. Uh, but with different build uh, strategies, you can also get uh, that under control uh, to a specific way. You see that we have here a nice lid, for instance, or you can also see that we then out of the semi-crystalline PP that we get this nice uh, flip-flop function uh, which we very often use in, in the closure technology. Going further, and this is another application, and now we go on the other side. We had this, this cube where we're talking about 100% density, right? This polycarb cube. But let's go a little bit into the other direction. The other direction means let's get a porous inside core. That means let's get a material which is inside not completely filled, with, which is porous, and that goes into the direction lightweight structures, which is a huge thing, um, saving materials. And with this 30 shore um, yeah, part, we want to show that, and we want to give you also the idea that you then have still the strength, you can really pull it apart, and the stability which is needed, however combined with a certain lightweight design. Industrial applications, let's move a little bit further. Where do we apply this in the real world out there? Um, well, with the three component part we want to start. Here um, we have applied a normal cover 
this is just a sample cover. And on this cover, as you can see it in the corner over there, we have a soft ceiling printed on. So the ceiling is directly printed on. You have a real seal effect. And we you know nowadays use that very often in our injection molding world when we do two component parts. That's as a first example. A second example, uh, ceilings in general. Ceiling, different geometries for the ceiling. And very important uh, is to mention on the freeformer side, we are using the original material. So we are using an FDA approved material, for instance, and we have the strength and we have the rigidity for that ceiling. Also a bellow type stuff, which, which, you, which is used in the automotive industry, or, or some, some hoses like this, also a prototype, a functional prototype in the automotive industry, and that is lasting and has the mechanical strength. So, uh, real industrial applications on their side. We can also do insert parts. Insert parts, uh, as an example, such a bearing was inserted, and we have here a roller, um, which is made out of two components. So the red colored material is a polymide and the other outer is a soft uh, TPU, a Desmopan out of uh, 89, 85 shore hardness. Um, and this should just pass over the message that we also can deal uh, with inserts on the freeformer technology. Going a little bit further into real applications where customers are using it, as I mentioned already a few times, functional prototypes, so getting the development process faster, faster to the market time. And here an example of a customer, Magura, uh, they are in these handle industries, handle industry for bicycle, for instance, where we have made a prototype first, they tested the prototype under the real conditions and later on moved then into the injection molded one. So product time for development and getting to the market was reduced significantly with such types. Special compounds we want to mention, um, and this goes now into direction electronics. Electronics means uh, we had one uh, uh, application where we have printed conductive material. Conductive material, this was a PC ABS blend filled with carbon nanotubes. And we have in that application, we have inserted the LED the LED um, and that is even lightening up, for instance, for captive sensors and applications like that. So here this example should show specific compounds which were developed uh, for specific requirements can be processed with the, with the freeformer and you get direct results out of, out of your prototypes. A uh, few three component parts, here some hard soft parts, uh, I have already shown uh, uh, one with the handle, ABS, a Desmopan, and also for instance uh, parts where we have mechanical, where we have mechanical uh, properties already included, so it's a complete assembly which we can build as a one single piece part um, that is new and saves tremendous amount of time. This is a uh, time, this is a gripper finger, uh, which we use in the robotic industries. And this front section is the soft section uh, for touching, uh, touching softer, uh, softer parts that we don't see a, a mark on the, on the part. So it's assembled and manufactured in, in one piece. Um, Let's go to another application area. Let's go a little bit more into the medical field. Also in the medical field, we always deal with proprietary materials and more even uh, important, we deal with approved certified materials, FDA approved, FDA certified. Here we have a customer, um, Samaplast, a Swiss customer. Uh, they use uh, different polylactides uh, and they want to implant those, those parts and um, have tested the uh, in 
the viscosity, the inherent viscosity, and it is very comparable to injection molding. So the idea is to produce customized implants and plant that uh, directly op optimized to a customer in inside the body. <coughs> Another customer application on the medical side, Esculap. Um, one uh, application was a standard ABS uh, tool, let's call it a rivet removing device um, that was uh, printed out of ABS, which helped them greatly to positioning and center um, the, the, the needle holders. And the other thing is a packaging uh, for one of their uh, tools which they produce and that package uh, had also uh, been built out of specific uh, qualified PP material and uh, that you see in the picture uh, below. So it was realized a faster development of new variants um, and uh, the, also the, 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 the piece account, the piece numbers have been uh, here slow for the packaging, they only needed to have a few pieces um, of each type and uh, additive manufacturing was a brilliant solution for them. Last but not least, and uh, we have put that slide in or the next two slides in because that machine is actually disposed in hall uh, 22, that's our so-called AM factory. We believe that there is a great uh, market in, in a way that we add value to the standard plasticizing part. So we individualize part or we individualize the part with functions. Um, we have therefore created a, a cell, a production cell. What are we doing? We are doing uh, customized grippers, customized uh, suction pads, inserting here uh, this black colored aluminum and then we print the customized gripper uh, geometry on it so that we then have the possibility, this is a normal cheese figure, uh, to move that cheese figure uh, out of, for instance, in our injection mold, out of the tool and displace it where we need to have it. So it is possible that a free-former machine can also be incorporated into a production line to add value onto specific customized, uh, specific uh, products uh, which have been originally injection molded or even inserted uh, and that is what we show in this uh, cell. Um, here we have a six-axis KUKA, the inserts get prepared and then we integrate that and what we want to show with that cell is also the whole uh, production uh, sequence A and also order input, order output and data, production data for quality measurements, all that is handled in one uh, controller and that is then for documentation very important. Um, to have that uh, available uh, and you have the, the right documentation available. Last but not least, a quick summary to come to the key points. Uh, very important with the Freeformer, we have this open system. You are in the driver's seat as a customer, you are not limited to certain materials um, only um, and you can also influence the part properties uh, that can be adjusted. There is a big material database and we increase that step by step and also with the larger freeformer you can have more possibilities of creating real functional parts. Um, there is one requirement of course you need to get involved in the, with the technology. It's a new technology you need to slice the parts first. Uh, the, there is a digitalization um, process in advanced uh, necessary so it is something new which you need to learn however it is not rocket science uh, it is easy to learn um, and it's based on the injection technology injection molding technology. So that what we, was what we wanted to pass on I hope it was interesting for you and if you have any additional questions, feel free to contact Arburg directly. We are always available 
as we say with our slogan, we are sent da. Thank you very much.